Hi, this is Elliot Haspel, and welcome to another edition of Best Practices Weekly. Today we're going to be talking about teaching order of operations in a way that really helps students understand the concept behind it. And this comes from an article on teaching children mathematics. And what the author talks about is that often we teach order of operations very simply through the PEMDAS method. That acronym stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Or, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally is the way that many of us learn that as well. Well, what the author talks about is that that's just a rule that doesn't actually really help students understand why the order of operations works the way it does, the importance of actually having an order of operations, and the broader reasons that sort of go through more of number sense of math understanding, which are going to help students moving forward. And so there are some very concrete suggestions for ways we can teach order of operations that really gets the conceptual understanding. First sort of an idea is you can have students create narrative stories out of expressions. And so they give the example of, say you have 5 plus 8 in parentheses times 6. And you ask a student to say, think about what kind of a story, a real life story could we come up with about that. And they may come up with, well, you know, uh, my teacher was having a class party and five students from my class and eight students from the class next door were coming and each student got six cookies. So how many cookies did they have? Right, and that's actually a real life story that shows this expression. It would be different if the parentheses weren't there. They'd have to come up with a different story that instead showed the multiplication first and then the addition. So, you know, first, uh, you know, just my class, we had the cookies, six of each of us, and then we found five more cookies lying around. And so, the fact that students are creating stories shows that they really understand what's happening first. Also lets you as the teacher realize if there's a confusion there, because it's going to come through in their stories. Next. Use functions and patterns to actually have students kind of derive the order of operations. And what this means is that if you, you just sort of do one of your normal patterns or function tables, you might help students see that if the function is, say, 2 times n minus 3, if you don't actually follow the order of operations, you're not going to get the right outputs, or if you give them the outputs, you're not going to be able to get the right inputs. And so it's another way of tying in something else they do in math and something else they understand. This idea that one number relates to another, but it's showing them the order of operations is key. Next, just do basic comparison activities. Give students a longer expression, like 3 times 4 plus 8 divided by 2, and have them play around with the order of operations. What happens if you add parentheses in there in various places? What happens if you don't follow the order of operations? What happens if you do follow the order of operations? What kind of different numbers do you get? This is really driving home the point to students that the order of operations is not this kind of random rule that doesn't matter. It actually is incredibly important, and it's all about how you kind of manipulate numbers. And lastly, if you do want to use PEMDAS, just be sure that you're doing it more of a vertical showing. And what they mean by this is that if you just write horizontally, P-E-M-D-A-S, it gives the impression that multiplication comes before division and that addition comes before subtraction. This is a common misunderstanding students can have, um, whereas in fact, of course, it's just those operations are, are joint and it's whatever one shows up first. So show PEMDAS this way, vertically, parentheses, exponents, and then multiplication and division together and addition and subtraction together. That'll help students avoid that common misunderstanding that uh, the letter that comes first left to right is the op actually an operation that comes first, because that's not the case for the last two. So again, these are all some very concrete ways to get students beyond just the rule-based PEMDAS way of learning order of operations and really helping them understand order of operations on a much deeper level uh, and a way that's going to help them not only with order of operations questions but also with their general number sense, algebraic thinking, and just math conceptual understanding moving forward. Thanks for watching and happy teaching!